Hi there. Welcome to night number five of the 11 nights of Halloween. I was just about to fill this bucket up with some water and go for a nice relaxing swim. Now I know what you're thinking. There is absolutely no way you're going to fill that bucket full of water, go inside of it, and swim. Well I say that's a bunch of bunk. Now I have no training in science whatsoever. But displacement is one of those myths. Kind of like gravity. And speaking of swimming, that's what tonight's story is about. I do hope you'll enjoy. The human body is up to 60% water. Did you know that? What is it about water that makes us so tranquil? We're surrounded in it for nine months before we leave our mother's womb. And after that time, we long to be immersed in water. When we feel unclean, we bathe in water. We join a church and we're baptized in it. We live near a lake or an ocean, and we run from the shore towards it. Even if it just means feeling our feet covered by the waves. I've lived next to a small lake for over a year now, and night after night during the summer months, I would take an hour-long swim there. It's almost magical, really. The way water calms. I'd immerse myself and close my eyes, hearing the white noise inside my head, feeling my heartbeat slowing, the tension leaving my muscles, and the feeling of absolute calm. And when I would emerge from the water, it was like being reborn, a fresh start in the world, a cleansing of every negative thought, fear, and worry that the world ever laid upon my back. This was the only place I could even begin to relax. But now, that's gone. I can never have that feeling again here. You see, half an hour ago, I went for another swim. It started like any other night. I slowly waded into the water until it was about waist high, and then I made my slow swim towards the middle of the lake. I reached the center and spread my arms like an angel's wings as I floated on my back and stared up at the moonlit night sky. Three deep breaths. I shut my eyes and sank down, feeling the familiar blackness close in around me. I don't know how much time passed. I never do. But I felt something brush up against my leg. A fish, perhaps. That was my first thought. Then it happened a second time. Only that time it was painful. I swallowed a mouthful of lake water, choking on it as I swam to the surface. I gasped for air as my head emerged from the water, before reaching my hand down and feeling a small gash on my shin. I glanced around the lake and noticed what appeared to be several branches and logs floating nearby, just barely visible in the moonlight. That must be what scratched me, I thought to myself, until I swam a little closer, and that was when I noticed the clothing. I felt a scratch on my leg again, and immediately dunked my head into the water to see what was causing it. I wasn't prepared to see the rotting face staring up at me the body of a dead woman, her hair swaying back and forth like seaweed beneath the water. I frantically surfaced and felt my head bump into a human arm floating just above me, the flesh decaying and the skin all bloated and discolored. I could still make out a bit of fabric from a torn sleeve just barely clinging to the limb. I glanced about and saw more bodies floating up to the surface, like a macabre nightmare. With every bit of strength I had, I swam back to the shoreline, stumbled out from the water, and collapsed just at the edge of the lake. My heartbeat was racing now. I felt sick. I practically dragged myself back into my lake house, climbed into my tub, and soaked myself for the last half hour. What am I supposed to do now? I can't possibly call the police. If they sent divers down there to recover those women, they might find the saw that I used covered in my fingerprints. Oh God. Why didn't I tie them down better? 
they weren't ready to be reborn yet. 